I'm Jo Taranto and I'm joined by Karen Lau who is the Executive Director of Catchments, Waterways, Cities and Towns. Karen is part of Victorian Government's Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning and we're talking about integrated water management forums today. Thank you Karen. Thank you very much for having me Jo. So in simple terms Karen, talk to me about integrated water management and what it means for your department. Integrated water management is really about the best source of water for what it is we are trying to achieve for our communities. So Victorians drink a whole lot of really fresh water that's come out of our catchments, beautiful surface water that flows into our reservoirs and out into our taps. What we're trying to do with our integrated water management work at the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning and with all of our partners is to look at alternative sources of water to be used where we don't really need to use potable water. And so as part of this um, policy commitment, there's been a framework that's been developed uh, which seems to me like a fairly uh, new way of doing, um, of operating and uh, you know, you're bringing communities on board in, in, in across 15 different groups across Victoria, is that right? That's right, Jo. So integrated water management in and of itself is not new. What is new under this framework is the way we are going about it with our partners. And under our framework, we have set up a series of 15 place-based forums right around the state of Victoria, and they bring together our water authorities, our catchment management authorities, local government, other partners like traditional owners to collectively identify their strategies for how they are going to go about using alternative water sources to do the things that matter in their local communities. So in some cases, that might be really about water security and supply. It might be about effective treatment of wastewater services. It might be about beautiful green public parks and gardens, water for economic development or water for culture. The important thing is it is not integrated water management for the sake of integrated water management, but rather to deliver outcomes that really matter to local communities. So if you're talking to communities about what matters to them, how, how important is ownership as part of this framework then? I think the important thing with communities is each of our agencies and equally local governments, they are connected in with their communities. They know what their local populations are wanting to achieve. The thing about the integrated water management forums is they are designed to achieve more together with the agencies in partnership than each individual agency could achieve if they were working on their own. A water corporation can make all kinds of decisions in the sorts of supply of water it uses. A local government authority can make all kinds of decisions about how it wants to look after its public parks and gardens or how it might want to support uh, industry or agriculture in their communities. The issue is with the collective work and the collective resource power operating under common localised strategies, they're able to pool resources, pool planning and achieve more than they probably could on their own. And you talked about the importance of important role of traditional owners um, in these groups and these forums. Um, how how important has it been for your department to include them and, and to make sure that they have a voice? Uh, so the Victorian government has a very, very clear commitment to traditional owner self-determination and that applies in the water industry and right across policy areas uh, in government. When it comes to water, there is a long history and legacy with respect to traditional owners who have been isolated from water management decision making. Uh, what we have at the moment uh, through the forums is some traditional owner organisations more at the forefront than others in participating in the forums. But it's really important to get the voices of what traditional owners are seeking to achieve out of water. And so in some instances, uh, forums have come up with very specific 
projects. So I'll take the example of Zha Zha Wurrung country up around Bendigo Creek. Uh, rather than have a catchment management authority, a water corporation, a local government uh, leading a piece of work on stormwater management and the health of the local creek, that now sits under the authority of the Zha Zha Wurrung organisation through a Wadiram Delk project where their work crews lead the work, they control the project with the input and support of local government, water authorities, catchment management authorities. It's a really important shift that we're starting to see. It sounds like quite a shift. A a and I would add there's a long way to go. So we're here at Vic Water this week. This afternoon we have sessions running on Aboriginal water for culture as well as water for economic development. Uh, there is a long way to go in this regard. We currently have funded Aboriginal water officers in traditional owner organisations right around the state. They are incredibly important in uh, gathering the aspirations of communities and helping to feed that into water management decision making. And so you talked a little bit about a couple of projects. Um, can you tell me about some other examples of where this integrated water fra management framework is really changing the direction of water management in of those 15 um, different groups? There are all kinds of projects out there. Some are in early feasibility study stages and others are much more ready as on-ground projects. So if I think about the kind of integrated water management projects that are demonstrations of what can be achieved, some of them may be familiar to uh, various participants in um, AWA. Uh, people will know that there is recycled water uh, currently operating a sewer mining and treatment arrangement at the MCG. There is stormwater uh, harvesting that uh, greens and supports uh, the uh, tennis centre precinct. Uh, we've recently installed rain gardens and drought proofing in Johnston Park in Geelong or in the Bendigo Botanic Gardens. Uh, there are projects that, for example, South East Water has been leading with Aqua Revo that is uh, building a new estate that is going to have a sort of 70% reduction in the amount of uh, draw on potable water sources. Through the integrated water management pro program, what we have is around 100 partners who have developed a series of their own strategic direction statements and collectively come up with in the order of 200 to 250 projects around the state. There is planning currently underway for integrated water management uh, plans in some of our critical growth areas in the west of Melbourne. I'm thinking about places like uh, Sunbury, where we are anticipating booming populations that will have demands, obviously, on the water resource and a need to protect uh, local waterways and also to have nice, cool green spaces for people to live in. They're the kinds of projects that the forums are committing to. So there's a lot of opportunity as far as I can see it and, and some pretty diverse projects. What are, what's some of the biggest challenges that you see when you're working with these groups? Some of the biggest challenges are, are also being tackled by the forums, not just from a uh, project perspective, but also to feed into the policy development project, uh, process. Uh, and what the forums have told us is sitting up as one of the greatest challenges that we are facing are issues around stormwater management and stormwater pollution and what that's doing to our local waterways. Uh, first steps have already been taken in recent months. So late last year, uh, the Victorian government made changes to the state's planning provisions 
uh, and these changes have expanded the kinds of development that are now required to manage stormwater impacts. And they might do that by installing rain tanks or they might do that through rain gardens or through precinct scale schemes like constructed wetlands. They're the sorts of things that by having the forums come together as a collective and to provide that advice into central government, we're able to use that to shape the policy agenda. That said, we've still got our future work cut out for us and there's plenty more to do. One of the most fundamental changes that remains are in uh, requirements and permitting for the use and uptake of recycled water. And there are still very real challenges around the cost of recycled water, particularly uh, when you're talking about infill development. Uh, and uh, a little bit easier on some of our greenfield sites where there's the opportunity to lay new infrastructure, but much of the growth of Melbourne is sitting within the existing footprint of the City of Melbourne, and that's much more challenging from an infrastructure cost perspective. And so what are you looking forward to seeing coming out of, you know, a change in, in the way that integrated water management is structured? What, what do you think you're really going to get out of this new framework and, and the collaboration of so many groups? I think what's really exciting is uh, there has been a history of seeking to have greater uptake of alternative water sources. What's different about the forums and where the promise lies is uh, this is something that partners are doing together and so our champions for integrated water management are now no longer just in our water corporations for whom water is their absolute core business. Don't get me wrong, they still are our champions, but we are hearing the voices come through organisations like traditional owner organisations and local governments. And uh, importantly, that means that when local government goes about its planning processes, its master plans, that it's got the voices inside local government that are making this a priority because they can see what it will deliver for essentially more livable communities. Well, it's exciting times, Karen. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Joe.